We're going to be going over how you can use MobX with React hooks. To start off, we're going to install two libraries in the common package. The first one is going to be MobX at version 5.9, and then we're going to be using MobX React Lite at version 1.01. .01. And this library is going to allow us to actually get it working with hooks. So we're going to go ahead and install that. And for those of you that are not familiar with MobX, what we're going to be using it for is state. So it is a state management library. Now to start off, we're going to be inside our common package. I'm going to go to source and create a new file. I'm going to create a folder outside, which I'm going to call stores. And we're going to say counter store.ts. So here I'm going to say class counter store. And I'm just going to close that. And we're going to have a single field, which I'm going to call count. And it's going to have a default value of zero. Now I want to make this field observable. So we can do that with MobX by saying observable and we're going to import that. And that's coming from MobX. Now it's going to complain about this. If we hover over, we can see it tells us we do not have experimental decorators turned on. So we can go over to our tsconfig and turn that on. And so here we're going to say decorator, and it's going to be this experimental decorators set to true. If I give that a save and I come back over here, it should no longer be complaining about this now. And I'm going to say export const, and we're going to say counter store context, and we're going to say create context, um, and that's coming from React, and then we're going to say new counter store, and give that a save. Now this counter store context is what we're going to use in our components, uh, and then we can basically interact with the store that way. So now in our index.ts, we had a basic example before where we were using use state to store the state of a counter and then we are incrementing it. So now we're gonna start by uh, making this work with MobX. We're gonna start by wrapping it with an observer and we're gonna just wrap it the entire function there. And now observer is coming from that other package we installed. So that's MobX React Lite observer. And then here, instead of using use state, we're going to say const counter store is equal to use context. So we're using the use context hook. And then we're going to pass in the counter store context that we created. So now what I can do is I can say counter store dot count to display the count. And then when I press on the button, I can say counter store dot count. And then we can just directly mutate it by incrementing it. So cool. So now I want to see this and see if it works. So to start off, I have my server already running for the website. So I have that up and I'm just going to compile the code here. Uh, so I'm going to go to the package.json and I'm going to add a new flag that'll make this a little easier called watch. And so we're going to say TS, TSC and we're going to say dash watch. And so what's going to happen is when we uh, run this, so yarn watch, it's going to compile our code and watch for any changes we make and recompile re it. All right, so here is our website. Just give this a refresh. And then if we increment, you'll notice it worked just the same as it did before. Um, so pretty cool. And uh, MobX looks pretty sweet. Being able to just mutate it like that is pretty simple. And I like that. Uh, so of course, we're going to be using MobX for the state management for our application. So we're going to be using it to store basically the state for working out or for workouts. So we're going to start by creating a new store today, and I'm going to call it the workout store. And here I'm going to say class workout store. And today we're just going to map out kind of a few different things that we're going to store in this. So. There's basically four different uh, or five different exercises that this workout uses. So we're going to store that all in the store. And we're also going to start out by kind of hard coding things. And then we're going to go back later and possibly make this generic and work with, say, any set of exercises. So the four exercises is squat or five exercises is squat. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to call this current squat. And when I say current squat, this is what, what it stands for is kind of like how much are you currently squatting? And this is going to be a number. So for example, you may be squatting 500 pounds or 100 pounds, and we're going to track that in this variable. Uh, let's see why it's unhappy. Oh, it has no initializer. Um, let's turn that setting off for now. Uh, initializer. Strict property 
initializers as I think what we need to turn off to be able to get rid of that warning. Say false and cool. And then we're gonna say squat, bench press, uh, overhead press, overhead press. And I guess let's be consistent. I said press there, do a press there. Uh, deadlift. And that'll be a number two. And then lastly is the barbell row. All right, so these are the five exercises. And again, I've kind of hard coded it here. We could also go with the approach where we kind of have this in an array, but I'm gonna start dead simple and then we're gonna kind of refactor things out uh, and make it more dynamic as we go. Uh, we also need to know, so how the workout works is we're gonna have two different days. Uh, like a A day and a B day. And so we need to know what our last day was because we do a different exercise on each day. So for example, I don't know, maybe on the A day you do squat, bench, deadlift, and on the B day you do squat, overhead, barbell, something like that. So we're gonna say uh, last workout type and uh, we're gonna make that a, uh, a union. So we're gonna say workout type is equal is either an A day or a B day. And so that's gonna be of that type, workout type. Or why don't I call this workout day? That makes more sense, either an A day or a B day. So we're gonna say last workout day. Well, I don't think last workout day really makes sense. We'll say last workout uh, type is fine. And uh, let's make that a lowercase o, I suppose. Um, and then the last thing that I can think of, at least to start off with, is we want to know the history of what lifts that you've done. Um, and so we can keep track of that. And the way I want to keep track of it is kind of a dictionary. That way we can keep track of, uh, and the key being the date. So what I'm thinking is create an interface, which we're going to call history, call it workout history, not to confuse it with any other type of history, like browser history or something. Uh, so the key I'm thinking is going to be a string representing the date. So we're going to say key of string. And uh, here, I don't think I need to say key of, I can just say key. Um, and then the value of this is going to be, I guess, an array. And the array is going to have uh, basically the values for that day. So here I'm going to call this the uh, movement or the exercise is a better name. Exercise is a string. And then the value, which is a number. So for example, uh, what that might look like is I'm thinking something like this. So on the 18th, so uh, uh, let's see, what month is it? I don't know, like 02, 18, 2019 is gonna be the key. And then the value is going to be array that looks like this. And then the exercise might be squat. And then the value might be like 90. So this day you squatted 90 pounds. Um, and then, right, maybe you also did bench press that day. And you did that for 100 pounds. So this is what I'm thinking the data structure would be. And we may uh, improve this data structure a little bit and add more fields to this later on. But this is what I'm thinking for the start of it. Anyway, this is kind of the start of our store. Uh, let's go ahead and just add that type real quick. Um, and then the next videos, we're gonna continue kind of working on this store and start adding some components and start rendering some things for it. Uh, but before we end this video, let's just export this. So export const workout store context is equal to create context new workout store. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.